Hello everybody one more time, my name is Alex Antena with Mercados Interactive Partners and in this episode we're going to be taking a look at a topic that is very very uh, desired which is how to start or um, how to learn HTML and uh, of course HTML is not for everybody uh, there are people that absolutely will not want to do anything on the internet but for the most part most people are interested on the internet and some people of course want to learn the language that is spoken on the internet so how do web pages um, communicate with us and basically the way that they do it is through the language of HTML or hypertext markup language and that's what we're gonna be taking uh, we're gonna be taking a look at today as always before we start let's take a look at our sponsor and uh, of course our sponsor for today is mercados.com m-e-r-k-d-o-s.com located in the research triangle area in north carolina and our focus is to help businesses of all sizes to make more money through the use of strategic website design custom digital media development and web marketing for more information you can contact us at 888-525-8117 or visit us on the web Mercados.com. Great stuff. So what I have here is the fundamental parts of an HTML document and we're gonna go through them to learn the, the basics but before we start let me just say this and it's that this tutorial is really not for anybody that has had absolutely any experience with HTML before uh, so if you already know HTML this is gonna be very basic for you uh, this is 100% taking into consideration that uh, you don't know anything about HTML so it's gonna be at the very very basic level uh, and teaching absolutely uh, from the very beginning um, so I just wanted to give you that caveat before we start Great. So the first thing that we see here, uh, and let me just say that uh, we're here in a text editor. So uh, if you're working in a PC, you could be using Notepad. If you're using uh, a Mac like I am here, I'm using a text editor called TextMate. But you could be using any text editor, including the one that comes traditionally with the Mac called TextEdit. So you're going to need to be able to write HTML, you're going to need a notepad application or a text editor of some sort. Uh, just make sure that when you use it, that you're using it in plain text mode, okay? And, um, okay, so pretty uh, simple stuff here. Um, you can see that the first line here it has uh, the declaration of doc type HTML and this declaration pretty much is just uh, an introduction and in telling us what we are going to be writing here is HTML uh, this is a standard so it's not like you can write uh, this uh, in different ways so I wouldn't be able to say for example doc type like this you know making mistakes or uh, different uh, approaches so what you want to do is keep it consistent always keeping this in all caps and uh, the HTML like so so this is predetermined you want to use it exactly in this way uh, although uh, HTML is a pretty forgiving language and if you were to make a mistake or if you were to not set it up properly believe me the browser is not gonna not show anything it's actually gonna try to render your page uh, as best as possible but um, of course you want to be able to uh, do it correctly all right so that's the first declaration and then we have like some information underneath one thing that I want you to notice is that for the most part if I leave some lines here it doesn't make any difference whatsoever when it's rendering the page into a browser uh, some languages of course you can't just leave any spaces uh, empty but in the case of HTML you can 
So that's an interesting thing to consider. So this, the second thing that we're going to have here in line number three um, is this HTML tag. And every time that you see the uh, open bracket and then something, right? This is what we call a tag of HTML. And um, every time that you see the forward slash and then the something again is the closing of that tag. Uh, and you're always going to be seeing this um, being presented this way. So you're going to have a word inside of the brackets that opens the tag. And then you're going to have the same word uh, with the forward slash that is actually closing the tag. And everything that is inside of that tag is what is going to be uh, described by the tag. All right, so for example, in the language of HTML, we have like the paragraph tag that is a P. So if I had this and I had hello world like this, this would mean that hello world is a paragraph because it is surrounded by the paragraph opening paragraph tag closing paragraph tag so if i wanted to have two paragraphs one that says hello and one that says world then i would do it like so open world and then i could do it like that um, one thing to note here also is that indentation is important for you writing the code, but it's not important for the browser to render. So you could have it like this and it would still work. Uh, and that's very, very important because uh, you don't need to focus at this moment in having all your tags properly indented in your coding editor. Uh, just make sure that you remember that um, it will be easier for you to read your code if actually you have like proper indentation and you remember to do it consistently. Um, there are some tags that are called inline block, uh, inline tags, and there are other ones called block tags. And I don't want to go into very much of a detail of uh, all the differences and nuances of the HTML language because it's a very, very uh, complex language, and we're not, we're just giving an introduction. But um, uh, for the most part, there are tags that break the rendering so it's going to next time that you have a tag is going to start um, in a new block and there are tags the inline tags that actually render next to each other therefore not breaking to a new block and that's kind of an interesting thing in the case of the paragraph tag every time that you have a new paragraph tag it's going to break the block so, so there's a distinction between some tags that are inline tags and then some that are block tags. And that's important to uh, know from the get-go. All right. So now, now that you know how to start and end tags, let's get rid of that. So now we can see that we have the beginning of the HTML tag. We have an attribute and the value of that attribute. The attribute part is followed by the equal sign and then opens with quotes, double quotes, right? Not single quote. And then values that go inside of the quotes. And then you have like the end of the beginning of the tag. And if we take a look here, you can see that this is being closed here. So we have forward slash HTML. So we're closing the HTML tag here and we're opening the HTML tag here. So it should be, it could be like this, for example. But in this case, not only are we defining the tag, we're also giving an attribute with a value to the tag. In this case, the attribute language, which is English. Cool. Pretty cool. Then after that, we have the head of the HTML document. So it's very traditional to do it like that. So first you define, okay, I am opening an HTML document. 
then I'll have the head inside of that HTML document which closes the head, it starts the body and ends the body. So pretty much like a person, you start the person and the person starts with the head and when the head stops, then you start the body and when the body stops, the person stops. All right, so pretty much it's uh, a good analogy of how HTML documents work. So we have the head tag. Uh, something to remember is that the head tag is not going to be rendered directly into your document. So anything that you put inside of the head tag is not going to be rendered in the body of your document, of course. And everything that you put in your body is not going to be in the head of your document. Let's take a look here. So in the head of the document, we're defining first the meta char set, UTF, and some tags, they don't have to be defined as opening and closing tags. So in this case, you wouldn't do this for this tag, the, the meta tags. Uh, and you may be familiar a little bit with meta tags because they were popularized by the SEO world with meta tags of description and title tags and keyword tags, things like that. So this is exactly what they're talking about when they call, uh, when they talk about a meta tag. So we have here the meta tag and all it's saying is that the character set that we're going to be using or that the browser should use to interpret this document is the UTF-8. And then it closes the tag with this forward slash uh, bracket. One thing to remember also is that not uh, you can't decide by yourself which ones you're going to close this way and which ones you're going to close with the closing tag. It's just a predefined thing. So some of them, and you're going to have to learn that over time with experience, some of them are tags that are closed in themselves and some of them are uh, tags that need to have an introduction tag and a closing tag. All right. We have here the title tag, which is uh, opening and closing tag for the title of the document. And the title of the document in this case is going to be a hello world page, which appears at the very top of the browser here. And then we have a link tag. Once again, it's a, it's a tag that we only close directly in the opening tag and we have several attributes inside of this tag. The first one is the href attribute, the reference. Then we have the uh, relation tag, and then we have the media attribute, I'm sorry. So relation attribute with the value of style sheet and media attribute with the value of all this media attribute could change to, for example, print or screen. And so that would mean that this style sheet is going to apply if I'm taking a look at this page in the screen, but not in print. Or if I say all, then the style sheet is going to apply to all different media. Um, what it means here is that this is a style sheet and we're going to take a look and talk about it in a second. And here's the reference to that file that is the style sheet called style.css. And of course, this is something that I can define. So I could call this my underscore style.css and that would be okay. As long as I, of course, name my style, uh, my style sheet file. I name it consistently. Great. And then we have the closing of the head tag here. And that's the head. Then we have, let me actually go ahead and close that so that it's easier to read here. Then we have the beginning of the body, which has an attribute of class equals, and there's absolutely no value as of right now, and I'm, I'm going to change that in a second. And then we have the closing of the body. So anything that is in the body is going to be here. And I can define tags inside of tags. So I would have, 
for example, a heading tag. And heading tags are numbered, so I can say heading one. And let me close that heading one tag. So my heading one is going to be hello world. I'm going to give it a class to the body of um, main, for example. And I can name whatever I want. So classes and IDs can be named however I want. So I uh, define my own names for classes and IDs. So let's talk about that for a second. So the attribute of class, what, what does that mean? So before we talk about classes and IDs, let me, let me talk about style sheets. So pages, web pages, define markup and they used to define the way that that markup was rendered inside of the HTML document. But as it progressed, they, they started making a separation between the actual markup, the content and the style. Therefore, now you can style your markup by defining style sheets. And a style sheet basically is another document, another file that selects things from the markup and then defines how it's going to look, how it's going to be rendered. Uh, so the content can stay the same and I can change the way that it looks in a separate file, making it easier for me to update in the future because it is not uh, defined inside of the markup. Uh, we're going to take a look at that in an example that we're going to do right now. But before that, let's just go ahead and do it without the uh, style sheet to see how it looks. So I'm going to save this and uh, I'm going to leave it right here. And let me just resize this, make it a little smaller. And I'm going to refresh. All right. So what we can see so far is that the title of the document is A hello world page, which is what we defined here in the title. And we can see that my heading number one is hello world, which is the only thing that actually is in the body of the document. Um, another tag that is very, very important to learn from the very beginning is this tag, which is the comment tag. So I can say, this is a comment. Okay, save it. And if I refresh this, you can see that it's not rendering anything. So comments are actually not rendered uh, in what you see in the browser. Of course, in the code, you can see it. You can see the comments, but you can't see those comments in the rendering anywhere. So if you need space to actually do a comment, this is the uh, the syntax that you would be using. All right. So let's go ahead and add a paragraph here. So you should by now know how to do that. So open and close the paragraph tag. And we're going to say this is our first paragraph. We're going to save that and refresh here. And now we have our heading number one, and then we have our first paragraph. One thing that you can notice is that we didn't actually put a break here, but our paragraph started breaking our block here. And the reason why that happened is because the H1 tag is a block style tag. It's not an inline style tag, and that's what we were talking before. So of course, with experience, you'll start to know which tags are actually um, inline tags and which ones are block tags. All right, let's go ahead and add a second heading here. And let's call this everybody. Save that, refresh. And we have a heading number one, and we have a heading number two. Now, an interesting thing is that you might think that uh, because we already have a heading one, then we can have a heading one again. That's why I named it number two, and that's uh, not the case. 
in HTML, you can have many uh, tags of the same kind. That's why we're even able to duplicate this, for example. Um, and so we can have different paragraph tags and so forth. They don't have to be any different. So now I'm going to have two heading number one tags. Hello world, hello everybody. Both of them are heading one tags. And then we have a first and second paragraph tag. All right, great. So, so far, so good with HTML, but we haven't really defined our style sheet, style spreadsheet. So let's introduce that right now. So let me go ahead and make this a little smaller and put this a little smaller as well so that we can have space for everything. Great. So what we're saying is that we're going to name our style sheet style.css and you can see that the name of the file is style.css and this is exactly uh, a text file just as we did before with the HTML so there's nothing special about this file either. The star here is what we call the selector um, and for example if I was to say P and then open curly bracket like that then the P would be the selector okay and so you're always going to be a selector followed by curly brackets and then you're gonna see um, the properties followed by their values so property of margin zero pixels semicolon padding colon zero pixels semicolon so every time that you have a property to define another property you need to end it with a semicolon uh, I believe that this is not necessary when you have like only one property but it's better to keep uh, doing this uh, as a habit so that you don't forget to put your semicolons so always give a property and its value and then a semicolon at the end to define your um, your styles. So we save this. Of course, this is going to look exactly the same. So nothing has changed. So how are we going to select our H1, our heading number one, hello world and hello everybody to change to color red? Right now they're in black. So all I have to do here is I'm going to call my h1 tag as you can see I'm not using my brackets like so I'm just calling my bracket like so, my selector like that h1 I'm gonna open and close my curly brackets and I'm gonna say color red this items here are predefined so I can't really come up with just whatever I want so you'll have to learn with experience what this uh, properties are and um, and also the syntax for defining my values is also predefined so I can use for example the color red because red is an appropriate value or I can do it with hexadecimal values uh, like so all right, and let's go ahead and save that and refresh our web page. All right, great, and as you can see now, our hello world and hello everybody, which are heading one, they both are red. And if I wanted only for the first one, the hello world, to be styled with the cascading style sheet and the selector here, what we could do is identify them here. So I can set an attribute inside of our tag of H1. We can set up an attribute uh, called an ID. So ID equals commas. And um, I'm going to... Um, so equals quote and then let's call it um, 
my heading so this is something I can define whatever I want so the attribute is ID and the value is my heading let's go ahead and save it and refresh so that you see that nothing has changed nothing has happened because I haven't defined any style sheet for my heading let's go ahead and define that so in my style sheet what I'm gonna do is I am going to identify my h1 ID heading by doing the pound sign so pound reflects an ID whereas dot reflects a class an ID can be used once in a document a class can be used many times in a document so if I'm gonna use uh, a class so a class of things then I would say class equal my headings for example or my heading I can name it whatever I want so if I'm going to use this over and over again then I can use a class but if I'm uniquely identifying one heading or one tag then I would use an ID if I'm identifying an ID then I'm going to be using a pound sign in my style sheet and the name is my heading get rid of this S here make it easier all right my heading I save here and I'm gonna open curly brackets and I'm gonna say okay I want this to be red R G B all right and I'm gonna remove this and save it so now my h1s are not gonna have the red so they're not going to be red, both of them, but then my heading one, which is the first one, is going to be changed to red. All right, let's refresh it. And there you have it. The reason why they're called cascading style sheets is because, as you can see, the styles cascaded. So the first style basically is not changing the color to anything. So it leaves it the same way, black, both of them. But then the document cascades into the next declaration and it says, my heading make it red. So of course, my heading, which is the first one, is red. Let's say that I want to now declare my heading and make it green. So. So what would happen if I do that? So now my heading, which is ID heading, the first one, the hello world one, is green because it's cascading. In other words, first nothing happens, then we make it red, and then it makes, makes it again green. Okay? And then there's a specificity of the cascading style sheet. So I can say, okay, make my heading green, but before I'm going to define h1 my heading color blue save that and refresh it and it's blue and you might ask well why is it that it's blue if first nothing happens then we make it red and to make it easier to understand let's go ahead and change this to the actual colors so if I refresh, you can see this stays blue. So first, it says make it red. Then it says make it blue. And then finally make it green. So why does it stay blue? And the reason is because this declaration, this selector, is more specific than this one. And by being more specific, then it takes precedence. So this one is red at the end, but it says, oh no, this one is actually more specific. So I'm going to respect this one. And of course, um, as you gain experience, you're gonna learn more about specificity and uh, how to uh, make something less or more specific uh, so that you can declare different things. All right. So of course you can declare different things. So. Not only can I define ID, IDs, but I can also create classes, and let's do that. So attribute class equal 
uh, great ones and I can give of course whatever name I want here and so that means that I can apply this class many times because it's a class so it doesn't have to be just once like the IDs so class great one so uh, you can see here that I'm applying it to two paragraphs and I'm also going to apply it to this h1 here so not only am I applying it to an h1 tag but also to two paragraph tags great ones all right so save that and then let's go here dot and this dot means class so class great ones uh, we're going to make this color blue save that and refresh it and of course now that we deleted all the other declarations that means that the ID my heading is gonna be red which it is and then the class great ones is going to be blue which is not only the heading but also the two paragraphs all right great so that's pretty much a, a good introduction to HTML and CSS very very basic but this should give you a little bit better understanding of what's happening behind the scenes now you can actually go into the source code of any browser of any page in the world CNN.com or the New York Times.com and you'll understand what's going on because you can take a look at the source code and see oh they begin with an, the doc type oh this is a, an opening tag this is a closing tag um, and you can see how the different tags are declared, the attributes, the selectors in the CSS, and so forth. So now you have knowledge of the basic, co basic components, and now it's up to you. Now what I would recommend is to go to different websites, look at the, uh, the source code, and try to understand how they're doing things, play around with different uh, options. You can modify them using an extension for Firefox called Firebug, F-I-R-E, B U G. It's an extension that you can in, install um, for Firefox. So you're going to have to download the browser of Firefox and then apply this extension called Firebug. But it will allow you to play with the different web pages and websites that are out there so that you can gain a little bit better understanding of how to. Um, how to apply tags, how changes in CSS affect the way that pages look, and that is the very beginning of website design. I hope that this has been helpful. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to post them down below in the YouTube box, the comments box. Again, my name is Alex Centeno with Mercados Interactive Partners, and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.